Hello there, lovely people. It's Alex from Nintendo Life here, and today we're going to be looking at this thing. But ideally, that way round, eh? This is a dock. This is another mini dock that is available for the Nintendo Switch, but you may well have already seen what's different about it. These bad boys. Yes, this is a Nintendo Switch dock with GameCube ports and GameCube controllers plug right into it and work just as you'd expect. You plug them in and you can play the GameCube styled games. It's a good. But as I've learned in the past, there's more to something than just its holes. So why don't we have a closer look and see what I think of this old thing then? Yes. But anyway, that's more than enough waffling. Let's dive right into things. So first and foremost, this is a dock. It is designed essentially to replace a standard Nintendo Switch dock, which I have here, and I think I'm gonna grab. As you can plainly see, it is distinctly smaller and thinner and all round. Yeah, it's, it's a much smaller dock. I mean, come on, this is basically the size of the Switch, but deeper and slightly taller. In fact, no, I think it's the same size. And this, this is the side, this almost fits in the palm of a large hand. So yeah, that is the main thing about this. It is a smaller dock, however, there are plenty of those on the market, and this is the only one, as far as I'm aware, this is the only one that, you know, has contacted me and said, do you want this? That has the GameCube ports on the front, and as a result, this is clearly, clearly designed with Super Smash Bros. in mind. And that is fan dabby dozy in my books, because I love me some Smash something rotten. I don't have a Switch here. And surprisingly, the basic idea is, you put your Switch in the top, <laughs> ideally from a better angle than this, like that, it sits in there, and then at the back here, as you can plainly see, let's get a nice big close-up of that, maybe with some light on. Crazy. As you can see here, there is a power in, which is the standard USB-C, so we would really, really, really recommend using an official Nintendo Switch power adapter on this, and an HDMI out. It's, it's a dock. Two USB ports on the front, GameCube, GameCube. You're good. I've tried this out for a number of hours, and overall, it seems to work absolutely fine. I've had no issues with it outputting to the TV or anything like that. There was one moment where I was playing Smash, and it went between uh, between matches online, and there was just a weird flash at the top of the screen. But the thing is, it was so momentary, and I wasn't looking at the screen at the time. I can't even be certain if it actually happened, or whether it was just something went by and some light flashed on the screen. I don't know, I just felt I should mention it. GameCube ports also worked really well. I didn't notice any additional input lag or anything like that. I'm not necessarily the best person to talk to, because generally when I play Smash, I play on a TV with input lag with a wireless controller, so what the hell do I know? So I usually use this. This is the 8-bit do G Bros adapter. It's got a GameCube port on it. You plug it in and, well, you, do, you plug your GameCube controller in, it makes it wireless, so it's a wireless controller. Um, and I love it. I like, I really like the convenience and it's just simple. That's good. When using this, it did feel like it was ever so slightly, ever so slightly snappier, but I don't know whether that was just because I was expecting it because it's a wired solution. Honestly, I, I really wouldn't be able to tell you exactly one way or another, whether it is, you know, faster, you know, lower input latency or anything like that. All I know is it's certainly no worse than the current solution that I'm currently using. Maybe it's a little bit better. I'm really not the best person to ask. There's also this funky little thing back here. This little handle, like the GameCube handle, comes off and then you can slide it onto the front or the back and, or is it that way? No, it's that way. Get it right, Alex. And so you can have it up a little bit like that. I'm guessing that's maybe a viewing angle thing because you can technically use this as a sort of a charging dock or even just a dock full stop without plugging it into the TV and all that and having HDMI out so you could have a slightly higher viewing angle maybe. It's a very interesting and functional little addition. I just don't see the point. Another nice little trick this thing has got is it allows up to two Bluetooth headsets to be connected at the same time as well. So, I mean, you can't have it outputting to the TV and Bluetooth, just the Switch doesn't allow that, but you can have it if you want so that you can have one pair of Bluetooth headphones and another pair of Bluetooth headphones, and it has aptX low latency and stuff like that, which I can't test because 
I bought the more expensive one with Apt HD because I only use it for music, and I didn't notice any drops or any weird sort of interference or anything like that. It seemed to work really quite simply, honestly, and well. The way to do it is a little bit bizarre. You've got to press and hold the button down for a reasonable amount of time, and then for a second headset you do it again. But once it's all paired up, it's quite simple. You just kind of long press the function button, and then it, it, it goes into Bluetooth mode rather than TV mode. It's fine, just because someone's going to ask, yep, you, you can dock a uh, switch light in it if you fancy. There you go. So that's the good stuff, and, you know, overall I'd say this is a pretty good little thing. However, I do have some little things, there's some little hobbly things that just irritate me. When you're using a GameCube controller, it is, as far as I know, automatically set up to basically emulate a Pro Controller, which is a great idea, because it means you can use the GameCube controller in any game you want that supports a Pro Controller. Pokemon, let's go, I'm looking at you! But the GameCube controller doesn't have all the buttons that a Pro Controller does, so there's a couple of button combinations like holding down... You just press L for L, and then hold Z, and then press L for ZL, and the same with the right shoulder button and everything, and it kind of works, but by default, the start button is the home menu, which, okay, yes, I like the functionality of the home menu, do not get me wrong, but my god, what if I just want to press start? There is no plus or minus input on there, as far as I'm aware. I'm gonna double check right now, but I'm pretty damn sure that's the case. I've just looked it up on the, the thing they gave me, the sort of, I suppose, instruction manual. What do they call it? User guide? Yeah, plus and minus are not bound and plus and minus aren't bound. You can't press plus or minus the pause button. That's just insane. And that means when you're playing Smash Ultimate, you'd select your character and my instinct is to press the middle button, start, to start, and I go to the home menu. You can disable this, however, and just have the circuitry treat it like a standard GameCube controller. I believe by unplugging the GameCube controller holding the turbo button down for like eight seconds and then plugging the controller back in. That may not be the correct way to do it. I only learned that because it was on one of the videos that they have on their website and it wasn't in the user guide at all. So I was annoyed. What's more, it's just awkward. I mean, it, this is, you know, it's got GameCube ports on the front. The people are gonna wanna use GameCube controllers. The people who want to use GameCube controllers are nerds like me who want to play Smash and can't move on. If the default was just to be a GameCube controller, I don't think I'd have an issue. I really don't. I think it would be absolutely fine and, you know, a little bit of additional functionality if you want it. But the fact that it defaults to emulating a Pro Controller and you can't press the start button? Just insane. Absolutely insane. What's more, I think this would be much better if it was just like a little a little switch or something, or just a, a little switch on the back or something. Just, just something physical that you could switch between GameCube and Pro Controller just so you didn't have to randomly press and hold and unplug and replug the controller. I, I don't get that. I don't see why it has to be so complicated, and I don't see why it has to default to the bad form. Incidentally, yeah, the turbo button, it works as a turbo button. It's a turbo button. I didn't really have any use for it because I don't really have a lot of use for turbo buttons, but it's nice that it's there. Another thing that's just a little bit irritating, and this really isn't a tremendous deal by any stretch of the imagination, but it's just enough to annoy me, is that the indicator LED, the power LED, when it's plugged in, regardless of whether there's a switch in it or not, it's always lit. In fact, it's lit even if you just put a switch in it and it's not plugged into anything, because you can use this just, as I said earlier, as a sort of a stand. It's not gonna light now, but watch what happens when I press this magical button. Is that lit? I can't see from it. It's lit. Good. I thought I'd be embarrassed for a moment. In fact, I might be able to even show that if I can keep it in shot. Maybe. I just need to... just... just need to... just... Can you see that? It's lit and there's no switch in it. And aside from that minor complaint, I do have one other major complaint. And that's the ports on the back. We've got power, we've got HDMI, and then a gap. You could easily... I've done that the wrong way around. You've got power, you've got HDMI, and then just a gap. You could easily have just put another USB port there or something. That would have been really useful. And you may well think, well, you got two on the front. Why do you need any more? And 
fair enough, maybe you don't need any more, but if this really is targeted towards people who want to play Smash online, or just generally, people, people who like playing Super Smash Bros with a GameCube controller, I'll be honest, I'm pretty sure that's who they're targeting. Just stick an Ethernet port there, or even just a USB port so you can use the standard adapter. I'm not saying that it's something that it absolutely 100% should have, but I do think that it's definitely a missed opportunity. The, um, the whole thing with the, the function button and the emulating a pro controller, that's infuriating. This is just... could have been nice. Could have been really nice. Because people like wired internet. I like wired internet. I need. But if you're looking at this and you think that's the kind of thing I could get behind and grab one for myself, then you can always find out with some more information by clicking the link in the description if you want to learn more. My overall rating for this is... <laughs> Buy it if you like it. But that's my rating. Buy it if you like it. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, then why don't you provide a way to stand that subscribe button up slightly in a relatively ingenious manner, but not allow them to press plus or minus, and be sure to check out NintendoLife.com for all sorts of lovely Nintendo-related content. Thank you again for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs>